Hello, we're here with Matthew Liu, who is musical director of Bastard Jones, which is running off-Broadway right now. He's also very talented in many ways, but I'll let him get to that later. So, Matt, to jump into it, um, can you tell us about how you came on board with Bastard Jones and what your experience has been like with that show? Sure, Dylan. Um, Bastard Jones, I first heard of it when Mark Asita, the book writer and director, we ran into each other at the library across the street. I go to Juilliard for school, and so there's a performing arts library next door. And we just so happened to be checking out books at the same time. <laughs> and the thing is, I had heard of Montecito from his work on Allegiance, mm -hmm. because when Allegiance was on Broadway, I was a freshman. I just finished my junior year. I was a freshman, and I had applied to be his assistant for the project, but that things didn't really pull um, all through. Um, things kind of fell through at best for me. But, um, but then, so we reconnected because he remembered me for my application. And you then, make an impression. Um, yeah, this was a much better job to do else more well suited for me because that job would have been a writer's assistant. But this one was with the music, which I'm more skilled at and mm -hmm. know a little bit more of the business. And so he had me come in for an audition. I played for him. I sent him some videos of me playing. And he and Amy were nice enough to take the chance on me. I'm glad they did. That's awesome. So this is your uh, your musical theater debut in New York, or have you done some this stuff before? My, this is my I'm gonna say this is my New York off Broadway debut. I've done a couple of workshops, you know, some 29 hour readings, which is just a race against the clock. But mm -hmm. this is my first real run of a thing, and really, I just keep on saying, Mark and Amy have been so good to take a chance on me, and you know, really give me the chance to show them what I can do and show the world what I can do. Here I am. That's awesome. I dream every night. <laughs> so can you tell us um, a little bit about the show, why you like it, and what the, the rehearsal process has been like? Okay. The show, um, I mean, what do you want to know? The story, the type of show it is? Or? Just give us a general overview of the story for anyone who doesn't know what it's about. Okay, here we go. Here's what I've been telling people about Bastard Jones. Bastard Jones is about a guy, Tom Jones, who likes to have a lot of sex, but he's a really, <laughs> really good guy inside. But unfortunately, um, it gets him into a lot of trouble. He gets kicked out of home, um, he gets banished, and then he tries to find his way back, and eventually, through a crazy turn of events that involves nine other actors, he finds his way home, and it's welcome back to society. It's a great tale of, uh, of acceptance, of understanding, of not rushing judgments, and it's a great tale of liberation, too, because it was based off of um, the Henry Fielding's novel, no, Henry something, cut that out. It was based <laughs> on the old British novel, Tom Jones Fielding which in its time, back in the 1700s, it was a real revolutionary tale because it was almost a revolt against the Puritanism that was going on there. And so just the idea of liberating, being free, not being so intolerant, but understanding. Right. And you found that it's a very relevant tale nowadays, still, you know, almost 300 years later. So um, it's been a lot of fun, and the fun part of it is even though it's an old British novel that it's based off of, Amy, our composer, and Mark have taken it and made a rock useful out of it. And right. it goes to show with, when they asked me to come and audition, I said, what should I prepare? And they said, bring in some 70s rock. I'm going, <laughs> so I brought in some Ellen John, some Stevie Wonder, and that's what I love about this show. The show has some really, really good music in it. Um, the sound is great. I really groove with that 70 sound. Um, it's been described actually in a lot of the reviews as um, a blend of almost the feel of Candide and noises off humor along with some Andrew Lloyd Webber-esque songs with sweeping melodies and memorable songs. So it's been a pleasure working on that. And I have some friends actually who came, they study Tom Jones, not just as a novel, but as a play, but they said, I've never seen it like this. And it's just wow. really exciting. So. That's awesome. Were there any challenges or anything interesting you encountered that you didn't expect during your time as a musical director? Okay, um, were there challenges? There are challenges all the time in live theater. <laughs> right. But I would say, 
what um, this being my first gig, I was lucky that I came in with a lot of experience as um, I'm on staff at Juilliard as a teaching fellow for mm-hmm. ear training. So I was really able to combine my technical prowess as a pianist and also as a teacher through school with musical theater and through the score. Like the first two, three days were was just music. And so those three days I was in charge and we blasted through the score. Um, <laughs> whatever challenges there were with the score, the singers, all nine of them, they were great. It, it, they, they're such great musicians, so I, it's an honor to work with them every night. But something I would say that's a challenge is um, the most practical challenge I can think of every night. It's something I have to compensate for every night. Um, we have a conductor's feed into the back of the house. So there's a monitor in the back of the house, and there's a camera in my band loft because they can't see me conduct because I'm behind them. Okay. So I have to conduct a band and then also conduct a camera and also still play keyboard because I'm <laughs> on key- one still as a music director. So that's a bit of a challenge myself. It took me a while at first when the band finally came in and then after we did our sights and I'm playing and I'm trying to figure out how to balance all these things at the same time. But it's been a fun challenge. It's been a fun challenge. And they've been very gracious with me when I actually miss cue or I don't cue them. You know, mm-hmm. the singers have to about that. So. That's awesome. Sounds difficult. <laughs> um, so to kind of back it up from Bastard Jones, can you tell us about um, how you first came around to music and to theater? What's your background? Um, how did you get into all this? Okay. Let's see. Well, I stereotypically for an Asian, <laughs> we were all forced to learn an instrument in my household. So my brother took cello and I took piano and violin. And you had to be so better than that him. was when I was four. That's when I started my instruments. We started in Queens, because that's where I grew up. Queens, New York, there was a Queens music school. It was a local music school, and my mom signed me up. And for my parents, it was really, will it stick? Will it stick with them? And it had always been that my brother, he was always more into the technical aspect. So he, he was fine with it, but it wasn't what he wanted to do. But I wanted, I loved it. I loved it from the start. And I'll be there were tough moments in the middle, but um, that's where I first started my musical training. So I was started in classical. Mm-hmm. Then we get to about fifth grade where I started, you know, singing in choirs through elementary school, through community choirs, and the middle school show choir. And that's when I first discovered a realm of music that wasn't just classical music, but was musical theater, because we sing a lot of that in chorus. I remember seeing, you know, best of chorus line, best of sound of music, The Wizard of Oz, Rodgers and Hammerstein, and I just loved it all. I loved it all. The defining moment for me for musical theater was um, when in fifth grade, I was in this community chorus called Casagio in New Jersey, because at that point we had moved. And we sang this song from what would have, what would have since become my favorite musical of all time, The Light and the Piazza, and I was just drawn, just the idea of being able to, with beautiful music, tell an incredible story, but with the passion of your own breath, mm. I think that's incredible. I love that. And that's something as, you know, as an instrumentalist, as just a pianist, you know, there are moments of that, as a violinist, there are moments of that, but to really create the sound by yourself from inside of you, I think there's something so beautiful about that. and. It's, I've gotten the perfect three combinations of that, of the story, of the music, and the inside passion of that. The easiest way for that to come through, I found, is in the medium of musical theater. You know, acting, there's sometimes, you know, really good story and really coming out of me, but sometimes there's no music. Opera, I would say there's really good music and sight comes out of you, but sometimes the story's a lost, mm-hmm. you know? but. Perfect blend for me has always been found in the theater. And so to be able to work now in the theater is, is just such a blessing. And I really enjoy it every moment. It is beautiful the way musical theater brings all the arts together and puts them on display. You know, how they all yeah. connect and flow together and can make each other better when they're together. Right. Um, so to transition again, are there any projects that you're currently working on? I know that aside from being a musical director, you're also a composer. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm in school for composition, mm-hmm. so um, this 
for the last two months because we've been rehearsing since May and then our run went right after rehearsals. I've kind of put a, a stop on that. I've written some things here and there. Right now, my intention was going into senior year is to look into the next step. So whether or not that means applying for grad school or um, I'm definitely going to apply for grad school. So that's what I'm looking for. Um, looking at schools like Juilliard, NYU has a really great writing program. Definitely want to stay in New York because um, I want to stay in the field. I want to stay in the theater. Um, looking into things like uh, like the possibility of just seeing if after school, if more gigs come up, and seeing if I can take them. I'm definitely right. this summer. I'm already helping out with a lot of other um, musical theater intensives with some of the actors I've met through the. Um, through the musical. For example, I'm working with Shel Stern, who plays Bridget in our musical, and Landlady Manny, that's a very funny character. <laughs> she is part of a organization, they run a week-long thing called Triple Threat Intensive, and so she's brought me on as a pianist. I know Joe Barris and I are in talks for some things in the future at Martin Luther King Jr. High School. Um, Mark Cito and I are keeping in touch. And Joe Definitely Barris is the choreographer? He is the choreographer, that's right. And then the most potent thing I can think of that might be coming up is um, at Juilliard, we have this thing called Opera Comp, in which we create new works of opera and musical theater. Um, the composers get to, combi uh, get to team up with librettists and book writers and make together a little 10 minute piece. And we have the vocal students here and the drama students here perform at school. So it's a real collaborative effort Last season, last year was our first time doing it, and it was a real success, and I was a part of that. And I'm gonna be a part of that again this year, so I'm gonna be creating a new theater piece, seeing what happens. That's awesome. Yeah, so, looking forward to it. So we've got kind of a fun question we've been asking everyone we interview, and uh, you might not have any previous ideas on this subject, but if you could just speculate on the spot. If someone okay. threw a hundred million dollars at you and said, use this, to develop new musical theater, what would you do with it? Oh, let's see. What would I do with that? How much money is it? A hundred, a <laughs> hundred million dollars. A hundred million dollars. Okay. What I would do with that money is, yeah, you're right. My my perspective is going to be a little different. Mm -hmm. I think there needs to be more openness to mentoring. So I'd like to use a lot of that money to set up a mentoring program and then be able to adequately um, compensate those who participate in the program. So, you know, the, so that the mentees are getting what they want and what they need out of it to be able to grow. And then the mentors are being well compensated and that they can use those funds to, you know, take them to outings or um, really explore and cultivate new art. Along with that, side of cultivating new art, I think it would be great to um, set up a theater exchange program, not just for students, but for writers, you know, being able to um, bridge the gap between theaters in London and the theaters in New York. I went to London in Thanksgiving, I think it was, I think it was lovely. Wow. And drama is so different there. It's a different color of drama there. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think it's fascinating to be able to build that connection there. So that would be also be where the money goes. Definitely want to set up more theater spaces because there's always need for more of those. Yes, and, everyone needs um, space. And yeah, I want to do. I'm gonna say that for now. Yes. All right, hundred million dollars might go quicker than you think. So that could be what you get for that money. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it if that ever. <laughs> that, that sounds wonderful. So. Um, yeah. Another kind of speculative question, what do you think the future for musicals is going forward in the next five to ten years? Where do you think the scene is going? Here we go. I thought a lot about on this topic. All right. Because the trend that we see right now in American theater, in American theater, is that the songs are becoming more and more pop oriented, and the sound's more going that way, which is great, and if the music is good, then all right, it's theater, and it's done its purpose, told a story. Um, I hope that there will be more openness with like directions of where it goes. And because 
there is such an openness and such a diversity even in London when I went. You know, the theater that's there is so different from the theater here. So I think the future for musical theater is that it will always be telling a story, and how it tells it is going to vary from time to time. It's going to vary from season to season. Um, but I think as long as writers are um, writers are have really strong integrity as to their dedication to the story and to making a difference and impacting lives with their ability to communicate and really show um, ways to make people see other perspectives. I think you could do great things for theater and that theater is going to go where it goes. And albeit, there will be people in the field who will write what they want to write. And while the, here's, while the New York theater scene is becoming kind of commercial, I'm going to say that, unfortunately, you know, sometimes even though it might be really good art, it might not generate the most money. And that's a problem sometimes, and it's, you know, that some art, you know, gets more recognized than others. Um, I, that's why, you know, a hundred, a hundred million dollars, that question, that would be going so that all art is appreciated, especially good art that might not, that might go over the heads of some audiences. Mm -hmm. But as we go into less companies, as we go into crazier times, say politically and culturally and um, society-wise, as we go into more and more um, dramatic times politically and just in the eyes of society and culturally wise, I think more and more writers are going to emerge because they have something stronger to say because there's a need now to say it. Right. For example, I saw that in Hamilton. Hamilton, you know, and really some of the comments that they had to say politically, um, it was a perfect time for that. And I see that in Bastard Jones, because in a time where um, there may be a lot of unrest and a lot of intolerance and a lot of understanding, that is what our show is to do. And I think Mark has said it many, many times, so has Amy, that this is a perfect time for the show to have evolved and emerged and really be seen. So yeah, there we go. And that's part of NMI's uh, mission, is to foster those new writers and anyone who has something to say, teach them how to say it. There um, you go, that's right. It sounds like you've already started answering my last question, but if you want to take one more crack at it, I was going to ask you, do you have any advice for um, people just getting into composing for musical theater or writing musical theater? Ah, okay, hold on. I'm gonna think about this one. Give me just Oh, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. For people who want to write theater, I'd say listen to a lot of scores, listen to a lot of music, uh, listen to a lot of the stuff on Broadway right now, a lot of the stuff that's off Broadway. Um, I'd say because really score study it has been one of the biggest ways in which I've learned really to, um, you know, dramatic pacing, things such as that, or um, personal voice for characters, and then to do that. Um, just the structure of a good song, you can find that from all of Rogers and Hammerstein. Um, and also for a theater writer, musical theater writer, it's important that one be, you know, well educated and well rounded. Say, for me, I always make sure to be reading. Um, uh, a script a month, you know, to make sure that I'm keeping my chops up in a field that I'm not necessarily a book writer. But mm -hmm. it's important to know those things because theater is such an integrated art. And my last tip is to just write what is true to you. Write what is true to you. Say, I'm, as I personally came from a classical background, but now I'm doing theater, so my sound is a little bit different than the pop sounds that are there nowadays in, in theater, but um, as long as you dedicate yourself to it and give it and like give it your very your very one hundred percent, it and it will be good art, and that is all it needs to be. Even if it sounds a little different, or maybe or maybe some people might not entirely understand it just yet, it is good art. Thank you, Matt. That's very practical advice. Um, very well spoken. And thank you for taking the time to talk to us today. It was wonderful to have you. Of course. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Have a nice day. You too.